everyone! Today let's talk about level design. So here are some tips for creating your levels or maps. It might be a good idea to start with some planning. So ask yourself, what is the current level for? Is it simply a transition between point A and point B? Or made for a cutscene? Or for roaming and exploration? For puzzles? For a big boss fight? Or whatever else? Once you know what your map is for, let's think about the layout. It might be a good idea to start with a sketch. This can be on paper, or in the image editor of your choice, or even inside RPG Maker, just drawing in some walkways to get a rough idea of the layout of your map. So how big should your map be? That's a complicated question. I'd say don't make it bigger than it needs to be. If you add extra space, it just feels empty, unless you put in extra time to make it feel less empty and boring. A good way to get a guess how big a map should be is defining entry and exit points and the POI, the point of interest, or points of interest, and build the rest of your map or level around that. The point of interest can be anything, from a building you want your player to investigate, to a place where a cutscene will happen, or the scene of a boss fight, or a puzzle, or an important NPC, or whatever. But your map might not have a point of interest. Maybe it's just a transition map to get from map A with point of interest 1 to map B with point of interest 2. After you have defined your entry and exit points and possible points of interest, let's lay out a path that you'd like the player to take, or multiple paths, which your player can choose between. Even if you have a pretty open space and your player can technically walk everywhere, define some paths you'd like them to take. The next thing you might want to consider is how you handle borders in your level. So how do you tell your player that they can't walk out of a level at this place? Do you use walls? Or a body of water? Or a line of trees? Or just invisible walls? Or something completely different? I'd recommend checking out other games and see what you like and what you don't like. So now let's talk about ways you can lead your player and help them to navigate your level. By using contrast, you can put your player's attention onto a certain area of a map. For example, if a certain area of a map is much brighter than the rest, the player is more likely to investigate that area, because it seems more important. The same goes for, for example, a warmly lit area versus a cold environment. Or a clearing in a forest area which also works with a contrast of density versus open space. An open area tells your player that they can walk here, and a dense tree line and high grass tells the player don't walk here. So if you build big maps for the player to roam and explore, there are some things we can do to help the player navigate these maps. I personally call it leaving breadcrumbs for the player. What I mean by it is leaving certain structures that they can orientate themselves on, these are no point of interest and they don't have any function aside from helping the player navigate. This can be a big pile of rocks, or a small body of water, or a batch of flowers with a certain color. Things that they can recognize whenever they walk past them. It helps them pinpoint their location and where they have to go from there. For example, there's a very obvious patch of red flowers and they know if they go right from here, they will reach the next city. This helps a lot, because it's so annoying when you get lost in an environment that looks the same all around you. And it also helps, because with 2D games we don't have the benefit of 3D games, which would allow us to see the POI on the horizon line whenever we want it. So sprinkling in little points for orientation into your big maps helps the player navigate it. So you might want to use certain asset combinations only on certain spots of your map, for example, surrounding a big rock with red, red flowers, and other places you just place the rock or the flowers, not the combination. This way, even if you have a limited amount of asset you can use, you can still build unique points of orientation for your player. All of this is especially helpful if a player doesn't have a minimap, because it allows them to memorize paths easier. You can think of it as a treasure hunt, from free rocks to red flowers to whatever comes next. And if you slowly want to draw your player's attention towards a POI, you can start sprinkling in some hints for that POI. For example, you could work with music by fading out the music and fading in some new music, or 
have it transition from one song to another song or uh, just changing the environment sounds, maybe from chirping birds to something more mysterious or a silence or uh, by tinting the colors. And you can also sprinkle in visual cues. For example, leading up to a set of ruins, you can start sprinkling some little bits of debris all along the way until it gets more and more and the ruins show up. New assets a player hasn't seen before might pique their interest and lead them that way. Especially if it's a new, very obvious pattern. If you really want to learn more about level design, I'd recommend playing games with very old boys, observing how they tell you where to go and how they lay out their levels. With that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a lovely day and this was helpful. Thank you. Goodbye.